Hey all, I'm Adarsh Rai. I'm over here to present this wonderful series in front of you, Master the Topic. So here we are with this very new session and a very new question as well. And what is the question? It is, what is equilibrium? So this session will all be about what is equilibrium and what all types and condition of equilibrium actually exist. So the agenda today in this session will be that we will be having a discussion about translational and rotational equilibrium thereby finally decoding what an equilibrium condition is and by the end of this session you will be also having an insight about even the types of equilibrium. So let's begin this explanation by a very small experiment. So when I was a kid my uncle gave me a very beautiful present and here it is a balancing doll. I seriously used to play it with ours and whenever I just touched it it began its motion somewhat like a to and fro motion and I always used to feel why it is not falling off from its platform. Whatever amount and whichever direction I am applying the force, it kept on moving and moving and moving. So do you people know why it wasn't falling? Don't worry, we'll be discussing about all the concepts behind the motion of a balancing doll and how it actually balances itself in this lecture. So to actually understand how this balancing doll was able to balance itself in spite of the direction or whatever amount of force you were applying, we first need to understand the basic topic or the basic concept that is what is equilibrium. So let me give you an example and tell you actually what equilibrium is. So let's bring a rod in front of us. Okay, so we have a rod and what I'll be doing is, I'll be applying forces on it. So the forces, the point of application of the forces will be changing and we'll just see what kind of a motion this rod is performing. So first let's take a case wherein we are just applying the forces from both these ends. And what we see is that the rod is in motion, in forward direction. Now let's change the application of our force and uh, let's apply a force somewhat like this and what I can see is now the rod is rotating about its center of mass. Now let's again change the point of application of forces and now let's apply the forces like this. So in this case no kind of a motion occurred, right? So what actually I can derive using these three experiments is that two kinds of unique equilibrium exist. One was the case wherein Two forces were acting and the body was in rotational equilibrium but not in translational equilibrium as in this case. The other part was when the forces were applied in such a fashion and the body was in translational equilibrium but not in rotational equilibrium. So then what is equilibrium? So the equilibrium was the third condition wherein the body was in a state of translational as well as rotational equilibrium and it neither had a rotatory motion nor had a translatory motion. So here we are with the final condition of equilibrium. That is, if a body has all the net external forces as well as the net external torque due to all the forces acting on a body equivalent to zero, then that body is in equilibrium. So this is the condition for equilibrium and the case can be whether a body is at rest or whether a body is in motion. So if a body is moving with a constant velocity with all the net torque and net forces equal into zero, then also it is in equilibrium. And if a body is kept idle in static condition, then also equilibrium can exist. And based on them, dynamic equilibrium and static equilibrium occurs. So do you wonder any cases of equilibrium? Let me bring in front of you. So as you can see this ladder, so this ladder it's so peacefully aligning itself with the help of two walls. So don't you think this is an equilibrium condition? Yes, truly it is. The net torque and the net forces are equal and they are amounting to zero. So as in this case, we can very clearly say 
that the object or this ladder is in equilibrium in a state of static equilibrium to be precise now let's consider a case of a person who is skydiving so what he does is he dives from that airplane at such great height and just look at his motion so what we'll be expecting is that his velocity will keep on increasing because of his own weight but what instead occurs is after a particular time his velocity becomes constant and equal to the terminal velocity and the reason is that the net forces and the net torque acting on the body amounts to zero and this is the case of a dynamic equilibrium you want one more case so just have a look at this leaning tower of pisa and i'm sure many of you must have heard of this name this is a very beautiful city of pisa in italy wherein this very unique tower is situated and so many people think why it never falls so it obviously never falls because it is also in a state of equilibrium so now with the help of these examples we can very well understand what actually equilibrium is and what is the condition of it but still our question remains unanswered that is how that balancing doll was balancing itself so for that we need to perform one more experiment so for this experiment basically we just need three objects a simple ball a hemispherical bowl which is empty from inside and a table so let's start off by placing the ball inside that hemispherical container now what you can just see from this position is that uh, even if you displace the ball from its position it again comes back to the same position right from where we started now let's invert this hemispherical bowl and place it on the top now if you just displace the position of the ball from its position it never ever again reaches the same position and obviously it falls down now let's repeat this thing by removing that hemispherical bowl and placing the ball at so many different points on the table so what do you will see that the ball remains in its own position so what i actually mean to suggest from these three cases is that in all the cases initially the ball was kept at its equilibrium position but in the first case since the position of that equilibrium was stable and hence the ball always tried to regain that position of stable equilibrium unlike the second and the third cases in the second case the position was of an unstable equilibrium and the ball always left that and if i talk about the third case wherein at all the points the ball was at equilibrium so such a condition is known as neutral equilibrium so with the help of this experiment now i suppose you must have got an idea why that balancing doll is not falling and again trying to reach its position the reason to that is in a balancing doll the center of gravity is actually located at that point and whenever you just apply a force on one of the arms of the balancing doll the center of gravity shifts itself in such a fashion that a external torque is generated which again makes the doll move back to its original position and this is the case of a stable equilibrium so the reason behind the balancing of this doll is that whenever you move an object from its position of stable equilibrium then it will definitely try its best to come back to its original position as well now let's solve a question to better understand what we have just learned so the question given to us over here is that in the figure a ladder of mass m is shown leaning against a wall okay it is in static equilibrium making an angle theta with the horizontal floor as you can see the angle is theta the coefficient of friction between the wall and the ladder is mu1 and between the floor and the ladder is mu2 okay the normal reaction force of the wall on the ladder is n1 and that of the floor is n2 okay if the ladder is about to slip so that means they have just given us the situation wherein the friction forces will be equivalent to their maximum values so then what we need to find is we need to find the value of n1 and n2 
So now let's first annotate what all forces are actually acting on this ladder. So as you can see over here, the ladder has a contact with the floor and the wall as well. So first, the normal forces, so over here it will be N1 and over here it will be N2. Okay. And uh, ladder is just about to slip. Okay. So the motion will obviously be in such a fashion. And as a result, what I can talk about the friction forces is that over here the friction force will be acting in rightward direction and over here the friction force will be acting in upward direction. So it will be F1 and over here the friction force will be F2. Obviously there will be a force due to the weight of this ladder and the application of weight will obviously be on its center of mass. So what we need to do is since the ladder is in a state of static equilibrium we just need to equate the net forces and the net torque equal into zero and thereby in this fashion we can actually find the values of n1 and n2 okay so now let's proceed further and just evaluate what all forces are acting in upward and downward direction and the forces acting in leftward and rightward direction so as you can see over here the n1 force will be equivalent to the f2 force and obviously the n2 force plus f1 force will be equal to mg So, these forces have to be equal, only then we can say that yes, equilibrium has been maintained. Also, it is given to us that the rod is just about to slip. So, since the rod is just about to slip, that means F2 and F1 will be equivalent to their maximum value. So, what will be the value of F2 and F1? So, F2, F2 will obviously be equal to mu2 times N2 and F1 will be equal into mu1 times n1 as is the case given to us so from here can we finally decode the values yes f2 can be replaced by mu2 n2 and it has to be placed over here and f1 can be replaced by mu1 n1 and can be replaced over here so now what the equations will turn out to be let's just find them out so n1 can be written as this equation will in turn turn out to be n1 is equal to mu2 times n2 and this equation can be written as n2 plus mu1 n1 will be equal to mg. So are they enough to actually find the values of n1 and n2? Yes they can be because obviously n1 and n2 are two variables which we need to find the values and rest other terms are actually given to us. So what we need to do we just need to replace n2 by n1 by mu1 and put it over here and we can finally be in a state to calculate the result. So what we'll be doing, we'll be just using this equation and replacing n2 by n1 upon mu2 and putting over here. So what we'll get is that n1 upon mu2 plus mu1 times n1 will be equal to mg. And from this result, we can very well calculate the value of n1 on the next page. So here comes the value of n1 and that can be written as n1 is equal to mg into mu2 divided by 1 plus mu2 mu1. Also, just replacing this value of n1 over here, we can obviously calculate the value of n2 also. So, n2 is given to us as n1 divided by mu2. So, we have the value of n1 and we just need to divide it by mu2. So, n2 we can also find it to be mg upon 1 plus mu2 mu1. So these are the values of N1 and N2 and this was a question asked in J Advance in 2014. So and now I suppose you have very well understood the concept of equilibrium. Also what you can do over here is you can also create a condition of rotational equilibrium. So what you can do is about any of the points, say suppose about this point, you can just calculate the torque due to all the forces that is due to mg and the normal and friction force at that point. 
or any other point also and what you'll find is the net torque are coming out to be zero. So this was the explanation all about what is equilibrium and I suppose you have understood it. So now if you are interested in solving more such quality questions about equilibrium conditions and many other things, what you have to do, you just need to find the link of Extra Marks the Learning app in the description and thereafter you can practice a number of questions from whichever topic you like. You can also avail the benefit of giving tests as well. There are so many score booster tests, trending tests and even you can create your own test. So don't stay at rest, accelerate your preparation. This will be all from my end. Thank you.